Welcome to Leipzig. <laughs> Watching Game Reactor, Game Reactor TV. What's new at Well? Well, we're coming out with the Orange Box. Uh, that'll be coming out on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the PC. Uh, October 9th, we ship to stores. Should be should be in stores in the sometime between the 10th through the 12th around the world. So, out of out of the box, what has you most excited? Personally, yeah. it's Portal. But one of the Portal is a game where we introduce this new game mechanic of like letting you connect different pieces of space and figuring out all the physics associated with that. But one of the nice things about the orange box is that each person seems to find something different to be excited about. Doug Lombardi, who's here, thinks Team Fortress 2 is the best, best part, which is the team-based multiplayer game. And a lot of other people like Episode 2. How do you see the, the Half-Life? franchise uh, developing in the future, do you plan to continue to release episodes? Or? Our plan for Half-Life is to get through these three episodes. You know, we're really interested in exploring this episodic approach to see if, it, if gamers prefer it. So, you know, we got a lot of positive feedback on episode one, but once we've gone through episode three, we're going to, you know, solicit, you know, our community and say, what do you think? Is this better than the sort of monolithic approach to releasing games? Or do you want us to go back and, and do something like Half-Life 2 again, which took us five years, which is a long time. But we want to have that conversation once, once we've had a chance to turn the crank on the episodic approach for a while. What's your what's your gut feeling? Do you do you like this work? This this kind of work better than than the traditional? Well, right now the fact that we can release as much value in a in a single product to me is a benefit of of this kind of approach. I mean, you know, if you're an Xbox 360 customer, you're getting five different games, and I think that that's a function of working in these smaller chunks, which make the projects a lot more manageable and helps the technology move forward faster. So right now, you know, we're, we're, we're certainly enjoying the benefits of that. And we really want to see, after we've done three of these, if people feel like everything is moving faster or not, because that's, that's really going to be the acid test. And also working with Steam, of course, it gives you an opportunity to, to release games more often and, and shorter shine. Sure, as we're moving away from sort of these high friction distribution channels that tend to force you to do these bigger and bigger releases to something like electronic distribution which uh, doesn't have that problem and you can release smaller uh, games uh, efficiently, it certainly enables this, yes. What has you most excited on, on Steam right now? None of us are allowed to play Bioshock until Orange Box goes to CERT. So uh, once that happens, I'm, I'm really excited to play Bioshock. Is there anything else that you look forward to playing? Uh, personally, what am I looking forward to? I want to play Quake Wars. That's going to be really fun. And uh, I haven't had a chance to see a demo yet. I've just seen this, uh, the, the, what they've released on the web, but I'd really like to see Call of Duty. Call of Duty 4. I think we come from a tradition of working with our community and with our partners to build tools that are helpful to them. You know, that's how uh, Counter-Strike got its start, that's how Team Fortress got its start. Uh, Portal, which is a part of the Orange Box, grew out of projects that were being done uh, in an academic environment. Um, you know, Left 4 Dead grew out of a, a license arrangement with Turtle Rock. So we really f uh, have worked very hard to try to have a collaborative relationship with with the partners that we've had and, and try to get great games out as a result of that. Speaking of Left 4 Dead, uh, a game that has me excited, what, what, what would you say about that game? That game is awesome. Michael Booth and his team have done just an outstanding job of tackling this problem that we all knew was out there, right? Since the first time you played Doom, you said, why can't I do this, you know, why isn't there this co-op experience that's smart about looking at what we're doing and adapting the opponents to our, our play style? Uh, you know, I think that the uh, the uh, producer feature internally, which basically looks at how you're playing and then ramps up the intensity dynamically based on how you're playing, that you know that's really good. So I think they've done a, an awesome job, and uh, we play it all the time. We don't have a ban on on Left 4 Dead <laughs> at the office like we do for Bioshock, so it's probably the game we play the most, except for the ones that we're trying to produce. What's your personal uh, relationship to the characters of, of Half Life? Like to Gordon and Alex? Well, Gordon, I tend to think of, like most gamers, I tend to, when I'm playing the games, I tend to think of myself as, the, as that character. Uh, I'm absolutely positive that Alex has a crush on me. 
completely convinced of that. I think right now, personally, I'm spending more time thinking about the characters in Team Fortress 2 and trying to make those sort of broader, bigger-than-life uh, characters that really capture the essence of the class that you're going to play. I am heavy weapons guy, and this is my weapon. It costs $400,000 to fire this weapon for 12 seconds. <laughs> but those, I think, are where we're really trying to do a good job capture, capturing a character uh, and then conveying that uh, th through those movies. Then he used his fight money to buy two of every animal on Earth. And then he herded them onto a boat, and then he beat the crap out of every single one. It's a very different kind of character, though. It's very different. It's not realistic. Like I said, it's bigger than life. It's, you know, and that, that's consistent with the game mechanic and the art direction that we're using for Team Fortress 2. So, is that like a constant choice to be able to work with very different kinds of, of games and different kinds of characters to, to mix it up for the team? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, the point of it is that it serves the, the game design. When you're thinking about the experience that you're trying to create for somebody who's playing Half-Life 2, it really helps to have realism to juxtapose with horror and uh, anxiety. Uh, and when you're looking at a game like Team Fortress 2, where you're, you know, people are exploding, you know, and people are, you know, using ray guns to heal other people and stuff like that, it really helps to move away from that sort of super hyper-realistic mode of Half-Life and into something that's more fantastic and uh, cartoony. And that's, that's, that helped drive the, the, the decisions we made about how TF2 looks and plays. What are your opinion on the next-gen consoles? Uh, I think they're great. Uh, if customers want to get our games that way, you know, we're glad that we're able to provide those to them on those consoles now. So what do you think about the differences between Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and working on the PC? Well, certainly, you know, our, our favorite platform as developers is the PC. Uh, it has its challenges, the fact that it's uh, not a homogeneous platform and you have to deal with all the differences. Um, you know, we've been focusing on the Xbox 360 platform and Electronic Arts has been doing the PlayStation 3. So they're in a much better position to, to talk about the PlayStation 3. 360 is a nice platform. But you're supervising the work, right? Yeah, yeah. We work with them and give them code drops and review all the, all the work that they're doing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Nice meeting you.